morning. And welcome to Sunset Hills United Presbyterian Church. It is a joy to have you here worshiping with us the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Announcements for the benefit of the body of Christ this day. A big thank you. If you noticed, did you walk into Finley Hall this morning downstairs and see just how beautiful it looks? Well, a big thank you to Ken and to Ryan for putting up the television that has been mounted in the front of Finley Hall on the wall. And a big thank you to Chris for organizing the carpet. And the carpet just looks wonderful. And so it really pulls the room together. And we're so excited, friends. We will be having a Finley Hall inauguration dedication on November 13th. We will have a church family Thanksgiving dinner to celebrate. You can spill as much stuff on the carpet now, too, as you want. There you go. We are not spilling <laughs> anything on that carpet and nothing with red dye in it. <laughs> no red icing or, or red Kool-Aid or anything like that. And so, but they are carpet squares so that, Lord forbid, if something should fall, we can replace the square. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. And so, Finley Hall looks wonderful. Thank you to everyone who is working on pulling that room together. Next Sunday, worship will be outdoors, weather permitting. So bring your lawn chair to come and worship with us outside. Bring your backpacks, kids, bring your backpacks so that we can bless the backpacks. And educators, bring your laptop bags so we can bless you as you begin the new school year. Also, next Sunday is the Picnic for Peace, Unity, and Equality, which is a ministerium event. The um, worshiping communities of our Mount Lebanon um, area are going to be coming together here in our parking lot from 3 to 5 p.m. There will be food trucks. There will be a little library, there will be games, it will be a good time. Join us next Sunday for the Picnic for Peace. Yoga will be resuming on September 13th on Tuesdays. There's information on the back of your bulletin about that. And also in October, on Sundays in October following worship, I will be leading a new members class. And so if you are interested in joining our congregation, you are invited to join us for new members class in October. Are there any announcements that I may have missed? Friends, let us remember why we are here. We are here to worship our God in Christ with the lighting of the Christ candle. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and dwell in our midst. Come and make mischief. Surprise us, dear Lord. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would show us anew your presence, that you would dance amongst us. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would guide us in your holy way that you would show us your perfect path. And we pray, dear Holy Spirit, that you would draw us together this day, even as we are drawn closer to you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Join me in the call to worship. Where is the Holy Spirit taking us and into whose lives? Do we hear the Holy Spirit speaking among us?
The Holy Spirit invites us to repent and follow Jesus Christ. Let us pray together the prayer of confession. Holy God,
because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages. We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this day and indeed every day our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The disciples have every reason to believe God will do the unexpected. Jesus, he died on the cross unexpected. He rose from the dead three days later, highly unexpected. Nobody saw that coming. And then the Savior rose into heaven. Nobody could have predicted that. So of course, naturally, no question, the disciples know that God's next big thing will be surprising, to say the least. But wind swooshing around like a hurricane in a room with the doors and windows closed? Tongues of fire tap dancing on people's heads. Languages. Languages. Everyone speaking in each other's languages. This sermon series is based on the work of Dr. Willie J. Jen Jennings, and he says this about languages. He says, the miracle of Pentecost is in the speaking. Disciples speak in the mother tongues of others, not by their own design, but by the Spirit's desire. This is the beginning of the miracle of Pentecost, the revolution of the intimate, end quote. God's next big thing, after the death of Jesus, after Jesus' resurrection, after the ascension into heaven, God's next big thing is crafting, forging, forming intimate relationships amongst God's people. And that, friends, is why Pentecost is not a federal holiday. That is why on Pentecost we do not get presents, we do not get special food, and in Finley Hall we will no longer be having red dye on Pentecost. Because Pentecost is about people being together. And people, in case you missed it, people are the worst. Linus, of Charlie Brown fame, there's this one quote from Linus where he says, I love all of mankind. It's people I can't stand. <laughs> people. Like the people with an overflowing grocery cart who sneak right in front of you in the grocery line. You know those people. People. Like the people who are able-bodied who still get on the elevator to go just one floor up particularly when you're on a cruise or in a really, really high building. People, like the people who drive in front of you going five miles per hour under the speed limit. People, like the people, you get the picture. People are the worst. And this is God's great Pentecost miracle, God's great comfort after Jesus ascends into heaven. Here you go, disciples. I am going to send you a spirit who's going to create intimacy between people. Who wants a federal holiday around that? Not cool. Our God in Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, breaks down the barriers between people on Pentecost. For a reason. Like a heavenly parent who knows what we need, even when what we need is different than what we want, God in Christ is the heavenly parent who knows people are, by their very nature, created by God, the heavenly parent, to live in community. 
our God in Christ knows that we people are created to be together. <coughs> Adam, he is created to live in relationship. He is not a hermit in Eden. No, he is created to live with other people, and thence he has his friend Eve. There are no hermits in the kingdom of God, but humans living together in community as we see the 12 disciples living together this day in community in the book of Acts. And God gets it. God knows that people stink. Do you remember what people did to God incarnate? They literally killed him. Put him on a cross. Tortured him beforehand. God knows people. God knows that people can be awful. But God also knows the beauty that comes from people connecting. Particularly the beauty that comes from people connecting through language. Again, Dr. Jennings writes, quote, The gesture of speaking another language is born not of the desire of the disciples, but of God. And it signifies all that is essential to learn a foreign language. It bears repeating, this is not what the disciples imagined. This is not what the disciples hoped would manifest the power of the Holy Spirit. Because to learn a foreign language requires submission to people. Anyone who has learned a foreign language knows how humbling it can actually be. It can reduce an adult to a child. But those who learn a new language fluently eventually learn to love it. They fall in love with the new language. Then they come to fall in love with the people, the food, the faces, the plans, the practices, the songs, the poetry, the happiness, the sadness, the ambiguity, the truth, end quote. The Holy Spirit draws people together on Pentecost because the ability to speak to people is what enables us to love people. What does this mean for us today? Us who cannot speak in all the countless languages of all the world as the disciples do on Pentecost. Is this a call from the text for us to get a Duolingo subscription? Are we supposed to feel guilty for forgetting our high school Spanish? Or is there another lesson here? A lesson about speaking not just another language, but about speaking people. Another lesson about a Holy Spirit-driven intimacy between God's people today. When we look at the stories to come in the book of Acts, we do indeed find a lesson in language for God's people. A lesson in language that has nothing to do with conjugating verbs. Throughout the book of Acts, we find the language of compassion, the language of empathy. Compassion and empathy. Brene Brown, the world's leading expert on shame, I'm sure she's so much fun at parties. Well, Brene Brown writes, across the research and clinical practice community, there are compelling debates happening right now about the role that compassion and empathy play in how we connect with people. Compassion is the daily practice of recognizing and accepting our shared humanity so that we treat ourselves and others with loving kindness and we take action in the face of suffering. It is not just a feeling. Compassion is an action. It is a practice based in the beauty and pain of our shared humanity. Empathy is an emotional skill that allows us to understand what someone is experiencing and to reflect back that understanding. Cognitive empathy is perspective taking, the ability to recognize and understand another person's emotions, end quote. Compassion and empathy the language of the Holy Spirit for the sake of God's people. And just as many people don't like people, if we're honest, many people would rather take a course in Latin than have to learn compassion and empathy. Why? 
Because compassion and empathy, they're difficult. Compassion and empathy, they open us to reminders of our pain. Compassion and empathy open us up to our past pain. They ask that we poke around at our scars so that we may understand the pain of someone else. My little brother, Clinton, he's just about a year younger than me. He was in a massive airplane accident when he was 17 years old. Now it was early December, December 8th. He was flying from Erie to Ross Draper Airport for his solo night flying exam. Uh, again, I'm a year older than him, so I was at college at the time, and I had no idea that he was flying that night until my parents called. The carburetor on his plane had frozen midair. My brother miraculously survived. He crashed and he survived. A story of that miracle for another day, and some of you know that story. He survived after weeks in the intensive care unit at Allegheny General Hospital, the pediatric intensive care unit. He survived after countless operations, and with his older sister, yours truly, with him every minute of the day. I was not leaving his side. I hadn't left his side since he was born. He was mine. I was watching him. And I remember I actually failed in our history final so that I could stay with him. My parents still don't know that I failed that final exam. I still walked away with a C, though, so come on. It worked out. <sighs> I don't need to tell you that those weeks he was in the hospital were the scariest weeks of my life. To have him almost taken from me. To witness his body changed forever in an instant. And I don't need to tell you that those weeks at AGH, they're not a place I like to go to in my mind very often. But that space, that space where I lost count of how many tubes were coming out of my brother's body, that space helps me show compassion to others. That space helps me to really hear others when they have tragic moments in their life. That space helps me to demonstrate empathy. Compassion and empathy, these languages of God's people, they are languages that take bravery, friends, because compassion and empathy, they call us to remember our pain so that we may be attuned to what exactly is going on in others. Now, a word about compassion and empathy. Brene Brown warns us that they are not about making someone else's story your story. When someone is in pain, that is not the time for us to talk about our own pain. Oh, I've been there. I remember when. Da, 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 da. No, that's not the time. I mean, I'll be, I've been there will suffice. That's enough. Compassion and empathy, they are not about internalizing someone else's pain. You can't be fully present to the person in pain if you're also sobbing and unable to cope with what it is they're facing. No. Compassion and empathy are about being with people, being fully present to them, being there with them in their pain, in their struggles just as God is with us in Jesus Christ. The gift of Pentecost is the gift of people being intimate with people through presence. My college best friend, Eno, from Nigeria, she sat next to me at the Chatham College cafeteria some days after my brother came home from the hospital. Countless well-meaning friends stopped by our lunch table. They told me stories of, oh, their family traumas, they gave me advice on what I needed to do to move forward. They told me how they were just so devastated and couldn't stop crying when they saw my brother's crash on the cover of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. And then they all left. And Eno stayed. She ate her lunch. She wordlessly picked up my cup and refilled my Coke for me. And then when she went up to the dessert table to go get herself a smiley cookie, Eaton Park was doing Chatham's catering at the time, she brought me a smiley cookie. And wordlessly, Eno walked back to class with me. 
It was amazing how well Enno spoke people without speaking a word. This is the beginning of the miracle of Pentecost. This is the revolution of the intimate. The revolution of the Spirit's compassion in our compassion. The revolution of Christ's empathy in our empathy. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us declare what we believe using a portion of the brief statement of faith found in our bulletin. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. Amen.
wonderful friends. Can we do one more round of applause to thank Ron and Scott for being here with us today? What a blessing and a joy. We have those that we lift up in prayer this day. Oh, yay, David got to hear the music. All right. <laughs> More, yeah. Oh, next Sunday from three to five in there, the band will be playing, right, Keith? And David can listen and the kids can dance. It'll be a great time. We have those that we lift up in prayer, which you can find on our prayer list. Um, we continue to lift up Bob Meyer, Krista Tang's father, as he prepares for surgery this week. Also, we lift up in prayer Christopher Tang, who is going away to college this week. And so it is that time of year, friends, that we lift up all of the, the young adults who are going away to school. We also continue to lift up in prayer the family of Noah Latronica. And I would ask that you please continue to pray for my dear friend Elizabeth Wallace as she navigates um, cancer and as we walk that journey. And we come around, and of course we continue to pray for Linda McCain as she recovers at Concordia. I'm going to come around um, for any prayer concerns that you may have.
was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer in February. Um, he has four children and eight grandchildren. And we visited a couple weeks ago, my sister, and it's her son and my sister-in-law. And things don't look really well. So I would ask prayers for him, for his family, especially my sister, who, um, my sister Jen, who lost his son to a sudden death three years ago. And now she has this complete upset. I think it's, anyway, we're all praying. Thank you. God is good. God hears our prayers. Let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. God, we give thanks that you are a God who hears. You are a God who knows our hearts. You are a God who is with us in the middle of the night when we cannot sleep, when our hearts are heavy, when our mind is reeling. You are with us in the most difficult of times, as well as the most joyous. And God, we give you thanks for your presence. Lord, we praise you for gathering us together this day. As a church family, to glorify and to worship you, we give you thanks for our friendships, for our families, for all of the things that do bring us joy for God, if we were to see all the blessings in our lives, we would be overwhelmed if we were to know them all, all the ways that you have intervened on our behalf. And so God, we lift up to you silently now our personal, private prayers of rejoicing. you be the honor and the glory and the praise, dear God. We lift up in prayer those who we love. God, we pray for Matthew. We pray your healing touch upon him. We pray for his doctors and all of those who are caring for him, that he would receive the very best care possible, and that this, this future operation, that this would be a blessing to him. And God, we pray that you'd be with his family and with his kiddo, that you'd wrap your loving arms around them. We pray this day for Richard, for his healing. God, we pray that you would provide for him, watch over him. We pray for Mark, asking your healing touch upon him, that your presence would be felt. We pray for his family, as they have been through so much, too much here. We ask that you would grant your healing touch that we may see your miraculous work. Lord, we lift up in prayer our church family, praying specifically um, this day for, for Evelyn Lape and for Lois McCain, and keeping in mind that all those who we mention in prayer are our church family. And God, we pray now silently our personal private prayers of intercession. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us as we pray for our siblings in Christ who share with us their struggles and identity. Help us to be a good friend. Be with us, dear Lord, as we seek to be faithful, lifting up before you all those who are grieving, lifting up before you all of those who are suffering from illness of body, mind, or spirit. God, we pray this day for all of those men and women who are serving our nation in harm's way, both locally and abroad. Keep them safe that they may come home. We pray for the end of the pandemic and for wisdom as we navigate it. We pray for peace in this world as we continue to mourn the conflict, the invasion of Russia and Ukraine. We pray, God, for peace on this earth. 
Lord, we pray for our own church, that we would be faithful, not to our way, but to your way, that we would follow your Holy Spirit wherever it is that your Spirit would lead, that we would be faithful. We pray this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our tithes and our offerings will be received this day at the back of the sanctuary by our treasurer, Mary Abbott. We can also give online at shopchurch.org. There is a lot of information on the website, so feel free to check it out. Let us say a prayer of dedication of our tithes and our offerings. Holy God, receive these, the gifts of our tithes and our offerings. May they be used for the sake of your glory and the sake of your kingdom. Amen. Let us stand as comfortably able in the doxology.